Hi everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy. Now, we've already gone over most of the guts of the kinematic equations. Now what we're going to do is concentrate on putting them all together. I'm going to introduce a new equation to you, and we're going to look at projectile motion fired up at an angle. So, without further ado, let's have a look. Now here's what we're looking at today. We're looking at a projectile that's going to be fired off at a particular angle at a particular velocity. And these are the equations that we're going to use to evaluate that. We're familiar already with the displacement equation, which is uh, the initial velocity times the time, plus one-half the acceleration times squared. The velocity equation uh, says that the final velocity equals the initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. I'm going to introduce this new equation here. And the reason that we're bringing in a third equation is notice that there is no time quantity in this equation. So we get the square of the final velocity equals the square of the initial velocity plus two times the acceleration and the distance. So these will all come in handy depending on what we have available to us in the question. So let's go over a couple of quick equations and find out why these three basic equations will tell us everything that we really need to know about motion. Now here's a classic physics test question. If you have an object that is on a building that's say 100 meters high and you push it off and have it fall down to the ground under gravity, what is the velocity it will hit the ground with? Now we already know that the equation for that is velocity final equals velocity initial plus acceleration times time. However, we don't know time yet and we'll have to calculate that. How do we determine this velocity directly? Well, to do that, we can actually use the third equation. And that is that the final velocity squared equals the initial velocity squared plus two times acceleration times distance. So what do we know here? We know the initial velocity is zero. We know that two equals two. We know acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared. And most importantly, we know the distance is 100 meters. We're ready to solve this. Let's go ahead and do that. So what do we have here? Our initial velocity was zero. We have two times negative 9.8 meters per second squared times 100 meters. That equals 1960 meters squared over seconds squared. And that is the final velocity squared. Take the square root of both sides. We get final velocity equals 44.27 meters per second. And we are done and dusted, as my friend Cy Mandan likes to say. Okay, so now we know that the terminal velocity, when it hits the ground, is going to be 44.27 meters per second squared. And again, this is 100 meters. So let's look at our other velocity equation. So VF equals VO plus acceleration time. Hmm, well, we know that this is 44.27. We know that is zero. We know that is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Well, let's just isolate t and find out what t is. So that will be v final minus v initial divided by acceleration equals time. So let's plug our numbers in. So we've got 44.27 minus 0 over 9.8 meters per second squared. Remember, of course, those have negative signs in front of them. So what's our time? 4.51 seconds. That's how long it takes this object to hit the ground. So once again, plugging this into Geobria, we see that we are jumping off at 100 and then we're going to impact the ground and let's see how many seconds that would take. And as we can see, it comes out to just over 4.5, which is exactly what we got. Well, so far we've been concentrating on motion in one direction. Let's go ahead and see what happens when we take motion in two directions and how we address that and how these new equations will help us with it. Now here we have an example of a ball being shot up at 50 meters per second at a 30 degree angle above a surface. Now questions that we'll be asked to answer is, well, how high does it get? 
What is the displacement of the ball from beginning to end? And how long would it take for the ball to hit the ground again? Now the difference between the other problems that we've done so far is that this involves motion in two distinct directions. Now the 50 meters per second is going off at a 30 degree angle. And that's broken into two different parts. There is an X component and a Y component. The horizontal surface here, adjacent to the angle, is the cosine side, and the opposite leg of the triangle is the sine side. So our vector is 50 meters per second at 30 degrees. Now the X component is 50 meters per second times the cosine of 30 degrees, and that's 43.3 meters per second. The Y component is 50 meters per second times the sine of 30, and that's 25 meters per second. So we have to look at this problem in two stages. We have the ball rolling across the ground at 43.3 meters per second, and we have the ball going straight up in the air and back down at 25 meters per second. To solve this problem, we need to keep both of these in mind. Now, this won't help us very much, because in order to figure out the distance, we need time. Well, we don't know what time is, but we can figure out time from over here so we'll remember that V final equals V initial plus acceleration times time. Well, what's V final? Well, what are we looking for here? Let's find out how high the ball will go. And at that point, velocity equals zero. Because it basically goes up, it stops, and then it comes back down. So what we need to do is we need to find at what time velocity equals zero. So given our initial upward velocity of 25 meters per second, let's go ahead and see if we can figure this out. So V final will be zero because we're looking for the time it takes to get to the height of the, of the curve. V initial is 25 meters per second. Acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared times time. So now we're getting someplace. Let's go ahead and switch this over to this side. We'll, we'll just subtract that from both sides. So negative 25 meters per second equals negative 9.8 meters per second squared times time. Dividing both sides by negative 9.8 meters per second squared. What that tells us is that T equals 2.5 five seconds. Now when you toss a ball up and then have it fall back down to the same surface or the same level, it takes just as long to get up as it does to come down. And interestingly enough, whatever velocity you send it up at, when it comes back down, it hits the ground at that same velocity. Well how does that help us with our problem? Well we know that when the ball reaches the peak, here and then comes down, this peak is half the total time. So the total time is going to be 2.55 times 2, which of course is 5.10 seconds. And that's the total time in flight of the ball. Okay, so what do we have so far? The time to the peak, where velocity equals 0, is 2.55 seconds. Total time in flight is 5 0.10 seconds. We know that the x component of our velocity, our vx, equals 43.3 meters per second times 5.10 seconds. So what's the total distance here? Well, it's 220.83 meters. Now, the, other, the only remaining question that we have is how high is this peak. Okay, so what's this work out to be? Well, displacement equals the initial velocity, which is 25 meters per second in the y direction, times the time, 2.55 seconds, plus 1 half, negative 9.8 meters per second squared acceleration, times 2.55 squared. So let's go ahead and do the math on that. Okay, so I'll save you the trouble of doing the math. This part of the equation comes up to 63.449 in the positive direction. And this part 
comes to negative 31.86. So our total for our height equals 31.589 meters. And there's our answer. Now let's compare it against the graph. So when we graph the equation, we find out that the total height is approximately 32 meters, and the total time of flight from tossing the ball up to when it hits the ground again looks like it's just a tad over 5 seconds. So this verifies our equations. Now just for completeness sake, let's go ahead and figure out the final velocity. The final velocity of the ball will be the square root of vx squared plus vy squared. vx squared is 43.3, vy is 25. We square those and take the square root, we get 49.998. The only reason that's not 50 is rounding errors. And what is the angle going to be? Well, the angle is going to be vx over the hypotenuse, which is the total vector of 50 meters per second, and we'll take the arc cosine of that, and when you do that, you find out the angle is 30 degrees.